Hello biology students, Mr. Adair here. Today I'm going to make a quick video on the totem organism assignment and go through the PowerPoint with you now. So I want you to take a close look at this image. If you want to open up your own PowerPoint so you can follow along, that would be great. But take a close look at this image and just think about what this maybe could mean. And if you want to pause the video to take a look at it, you should. What we're seeing here is the main five kingdoms of life on Earth. So as scientists, we like to group things um, based on similarities, and we'll talk more about that later. But these five major kingdoms are like the big categories where we group different living things. So for example, the kingdom of plants. That's where we group all of the flowering plants, ferns, mosses, big trees, conifers, all the trees and plants will go in there. Kingdom fungi, that's the fungus. Like the mushrooms you put on a pizza, as well as mold that grows on your bread, yeast, all the different types of fungus. We have the kingdom animalia, the kingdom of animals. That's like humans, earthworms, insects, squids. And some two others that you probably don't know as much are the monarians, which are back, the kingdom of bacteria, and the kingdom protista, the protists, which are kind of plant-like and um, animal-like. They're interesting, like algae and lakes will be partly that. So in general, we have major ways we group living things. And if you remember, we already know what we consider um, living, the four characteristics, characteristics of life, which you did earlier this week. All right, let's look at some examples. So kingdom animalia, that'd be humans or wolves. The gray wolf, which this picture is, um, the scientific name is Canis lupus. And we'll talk more about how we categorize animals as we get further down into a specific species. But um, this is just one example of a uh, living thing in the, in the kingdom animalia. Um, kingdom monera, like I mentioned, is the bacteria. Bacteria are um, living things that they can make us sick sometimes, but they actually live inside of our bodies and actually make us healthy in a lot of ways. This is a picture of a chemosynthetic bacteria, which actually uses chemicals to survive. All right, kingdom plant. Here are some huge redwood trees out in California. Hopefully they're not burned down. There's a lot of fires there right now, but um, Kingdom plant, there's many, millions of different species of plants, and they're all grouped under the big umbrella of the kingdom plantae. Yeah, sequoia, and it's hard for me to pronounce that, sequoia dendron giganteum, which is the scientific name for this type of um, tree. Old and beautiful and, yeah. All right, now we think animals only, when we think kingdom animal, animalia, we think about wolves, humans, our dog, all the big animals. But you know what? There's a lot of tiny microscopic um, organisms in the kingdom animalia. If you look closely at this, this is an electron microscope image of an eyelash mite, Demodex folliculurum. I can't even pronounce that, it's difficult. But these little. Tiny little organisms actually live in your eyelashes, believe it or not. And I know probably you don't want to think about that, but they do. What else here? Oh, giant squid, kingdom animalia again. Um, a, a peacock pansy butterfly. Also in the kingdom animalia. When we think animals, we're also talking about insects. Also in the kingdom fungi, we have... Um, Basidiomycota bracket fungi that maybe you've seen out in nature, or the morel mushroom, which in the springtime of Minnesota, you can pick morel mushrooms and they're kind of a delicacy in a way. People eat them. But never eat a mushroom unless you know a lot about it because they can make you very sick and even kill you. Kingdom Protista, this is a picture of an amoeba. Now, these live in the um, aquatic environments, like you could find these in Como Lake. and They've a lot of prote protists photosynthesize, so they use the sun's energy, but they can also move around and hunt food, and they're just kind of unique. There's a lot of different types of them. Okay, so we went through a few different types of 
living things. All right, you are gonna, you're going to be asked to find an organism to research, study, and know as deeply as you have known anything. You will know everything about this, your totem organism. Your knowledge of this living thing will give you a base from which to make connections with other organisms and to apply the concepts we're learning in this class. This approach will strengthen your learning and allow you to help others learn by finding relationships to their totems. Are they prey? Are they predator? Are they mutualistic? Do they share habitat? When we get to a place where this organism could be part of the instruction or conversation, you should offer information about it. So what exactly is a totem organism? Well, last fall, you can still see me here, last fall, I had the opportunity to go to British Columbia, Vancouver. And on Vancouver, we I went to the island, Vancouver Island, which is incredible, but even just outside the city in, uh, in the parks around there, there, I took these pictures myself of ancient totem poles built by the first first nations people in british columbia and um these totem poles are absolutely beautiful and built by the natives and they can symbolize family lineages spiritual connections or just making um honoring the animals around them and i've always thought totem poles were just the coolest thing in the world and if you look closely at these images you'll see just how amazingly beautiful they are so you're going to pick your totem animal that if it was up to you that you would put on your totem pole or that you're going to honor and respect and learn everything about so what that means let me exit out of here to go to the assignment oh my dog is barking Okay, I just read that same thing. For now, you're gonna choose your totem organism. This could be your favorite animal or a living organism you are interested in. Please do not choose domesticated animals like dogs, cats, chickens, cows. I think it's more fun if you pick a kind of an animal that lives out in the wild. But you could also pick a tree, because trees are living. You could pick a fungus. You could pick a protist if you want. You could pick a deep sea creature. These need to be real though and um, I prefer if they're not extinct. So, for example, I prefer if they're not like dinosaurs or something like that. Although those are cool to learn about too. So, choose your totem organism. It could be your favorite one. When I was your age, my favorite animal was a cheetah in the um, in the feline family. You're going to upload or paste an image of your organism here so I can see it. Then you're going to do some research. What is the scientific name of your totem organism? What's the common name? So, for example, scientific name of the gray wolf was Canis lupus, and the common name is gray wolf. The classification. All right, so that goes into the kingdom and the domain and the species. So, try to classify it based on the research that you find. To what other organisms is it related? The wolf example, Canis lupus, you could say wolves are related to domesticated dogs. They're related to, and maybe you can do some research and find some other organisms that they're closely related to on the tree of life. So another example would be, let's say you picked, um, I mean, there's a lot of different types. If you picked a painted turtle, you could say, well, painted turtles are related to sea turtles because they're all part of that sort of family. In what type of habitat would you find it? So where does it live and in like what area does it live in? If you picked a painted turtle that lives in Minnesota, the habitat could be swamps and lakes. They eat algae. They live in the sun, you know, they sunbathe. So really explain where your totem organism lives. Then describe your organism in detail. This is where you can use your free range to write a little bit and be creative. And then why is this organism important or interesting to you? Why did you choose it as your totem organism? Now, this is, again, an opportunity to share a little bit about yourself and what you like. So please take it serious and do a good job and write in complete sentences. And I look forward to reading about your totem organisms. And we'll bring those back later this year when we talk about other concepts in biology. All right, I need to move on to my next meeting. So I'm going to stop this for now. And good luck, and I'll talk to you soon.